I'm Dr. Anjali Huda Sangwan, an American board certified obesity, metabolic medicine, and clinical nutrition consultant. So, guys, I'm live with Dr. Faisal Khan today. He's a rheumatologist, and we're going to be answering your questions. And uh, we'll be learning a little more about rheumatology because joint pains are so common, and people are not really getting the right help. And um, there is definitely a lack of rheumatologists in India, and we are not um, really going to the right people. We are having problems, and we are, um, you know, having a lot of issues. So um, stop saying I love you here. We are doing some discussions. So guys, uh, let me introduce you to Dr. Faisal. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Faisal Khan. I am a rheumatologist. I uh, live in America, and I'm visiting uh, Delhi. And I had a chance to meet uh, Dr. Anjali, and she asked me to do the segment. I'm more than happy to take your questions, and uh, if there's any queries that I can answer, that'd be more than happy. So, that this is not going to be too much in Hindi. Yeah, Tara. It's fun. I'll try my Hindi. So, because he's been living in America for over two decades, so I don't think we can do too much Hindi, but just the beginning, um, we'll try and answer your questions as much as possible. Um, so guys, um, since nobody has popped in a question, I'm going to ask Dr. Uh, Petal to explain to us like wh what does rheumatology really cover? So it's a very uh, extensive branch of, uh, of medicine which deals with uh, immune dysfunctions of the immune system, uh, often known as autoimmune disorders. It also deals with different types of arthritis. Uh, meaning different types of arthritis, uh, such as inflammatory arthritis and uh, and, and uh, uh, others that are mechanical, such as osteoarthritis, or even crystal crystal mediated, such as gout, etc., etc. So it's quite a comprehensive uh, field, which involves uh, dealing with uh, different types of musculoskeletal pain disorders, uh, as well as immune stuff uh, when your immune system goes uh, haywire. And you start making uh, cells that are uh, detrimental to your own body, such as lupus, etc. So it, it covers a wide, uh, wide array of, uh, of medical conditions. Okay, so that was a good explanation. So um, the question uh, already has popped up is about someone's um, uh, someone's asking how to reduce joint stiffness in spite of using intercepted injections just once a three weeks. So. I guess uh, I'm not aware of intercept injections. I guess these are cortis. I think uh, there's a biological. Oh, intercept. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. embryo. Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. okay. So, uh, uh, so okay. So you know, when you're talking about intercept injections, you're basically alluding to uh, a form of arthritis which is inflammatory in nature, which is rheumatoid arthritis, uh, most commonly. It's one of the most common inflammatory arthritis out there. And for that, when you fail other agents such as methotrexate and oral agents, then you add this medication. It is known as step-up therapy, and it keeps it's a biologic and it's a strong potent medication, and it should basically take care of joint pain, swelling, and stiffness. Oftentimes, one drug doesn't do it all. So it would be interesting to note: Are you taking anything else besides Enbrel? Uh, or, or it's just monotherapy, meaning it's, that's all you're taking. Oftentimes, if it's monotherapy and you continue to have symptoms, then perhaps adding something to it might be beneficial to, uh, for you in controlling and alleviating sickness. Yes, so actually I hope he answered your question. If you are taking other drugs also, then uh, you, you can type it out too. Um, can we do without the injections? Yeah, um, sure. Is, is, I think it's a case of AS. So ankylosing spondylitis is a condition that specifically involves the spine. It's again an inflammatory disorder. Uh, it's, just, it's very important to actually come to a, a conclusive diagnosis. Basically, it's, what I'm trying to say is it's often misdiagnosed. Mechanical pain can also sometimes be confused with inflammatory pain. This is an arthritic condition that involves the spine, meaning it is specifically localized around the entire spine and there are inflammatory cells that go and sit on your spine and cause you to have morning stiffness, uh, it causes significant amounts of pain and other uh, limitations of range of motion etc etc. Commonly starts, it's an ascending type of a arthritis meaning it starts below in your hips 
and it moves up into your spine, including the cervix, including your neck. But the most common thing that you see is generally low back pain with significant amounts of stiffness, especially in the morning. So if you try basic therapy such as uh, oral agents that you know that that, that you begin uh, when you get diagnosed initially. Uh, and you have failed those, then of course you are left with biologics. Now, if you have a biologic that you're taking, such as Humira or Tamarcep, and it's not working, then you need to switch. You need to switch or increase the dose. I, I'm not sure what you're taking, but if you're, let's say if you're taking Humira, which is known as Adal uh, uh, Lumine Mab, uh, it's one shot every two weeks. If your symptoms persist, then you can increase it to one shot every week. And that would alleviate your symptoms because this is a very, uh, very uh, interesting, and it's a very, uh, uh, it's a it's a disorder which basically needs significant amounts of uh, uh, therapy because you ultimately, if it's not addressed properly, you'll end up having a stiff spine, and the damage is permanent, and it causes long-term morbidity, meaning you will not be able to have range of motion in your neck or your back. So it needs to be. Uh, managed aggressively. So, I mean, if the one biologic does not work, then you need to switch. It's called a class switch. Switch classes to a different biologic. And there are several out there that are approved now, officially. Mm -hmm. So, I, it's actually, I hope you got this. I, I know the space is in here. So, you've been on this, and um, you know, we were doing a lot of anti inflammatory diets before then. The frequency was decreased, but um, I get problems still persist. Um, so I was asking, what is the cause of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis? So juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is also known as JIA now. It's called juvenile inflammatory arthritis. By definition, it is an arthritis which is seen in young, uh, which is seen in the younger population that are below 18. It's the same thing, but it is, it's a form of uh, what we call as uh, childhood rheumatoid arthritis in layman terms. So it has the, it has the same ingredients of RA, which is joint pain, it initially starts with stiffness and then goes to joint pain and then ultimately swelling. And so basically the cause is an aberrant immune system. Your immune system has a balance. It has, you know, you make cells which are inflammatory in nature and when you make cells, your own body has the capability of neutralizing these by making anti-inflammatory cells and there's a balance. So in these conditions, often in childhood, we don't know exactly why it happened, but if something triggers it and it goes haywire, your anti-inflammatory cells are not enough to combat the pro-inflammatory cells. So therefore, your inflammation rises and these cells go and sit on your joints, especially your small joints and medium joints such as your knuckles, your fingers, your wrists, and oftentimes your larger joints such as your knees, especially in the juvenile form. Mm -hmm. And that causes you to have these things. So basically, a disorder uh, caused by an aberrant or a, or a dysfunctional immune system. Okay, so how does a parent recognize, like, before? So, yes, so if your child, uh, you know, tells you that, you know, they have knee pain, which is persistent, I mean, all, at some point, everybody, uh, you know, who's a parent knows that they have, they have children who complain of pain, oftentimes they're growing pain. And that is not something that you need to worry about, but if you have something that is persistent, especially in one joint, and they keep, you know, they come back from school and tell you, you know, my ankle is hurting, and there is no identifiable trauma to it. And then they say, you know, it's swollen. And you actually visibly, you can see the swelling as well. And they keep complaining of stiffness. Uh, I mean, something that doesn't match, uh, uh, you know, uh, the growing pains. And that's, that's the reason that, you know, one needs to be concerned as a parent and, uh, and, and take them to the, uh, uh, to the doctor. Okay. I hope the, I mean, parents can, I mean, this is a question. Swelling and stiffness, and especially if they have a warm. <laughs> You can feel the joint, there's warmth, and there's some element of swelling in it, and that needs attention. That is not growing pains. Okay. Um, so, Sakshi is asking the same patient with uh, Anthony. We've added supplements like MSM omega 3 B12 complement. Right. So, so good. Yes. There are, you know, you know, now research has proved, you know, it's proving the turmeric, the cumin, omegas, uh, you know, gluten free diets, they're all helpful. They're called anti inflammatory diets, and they're significantly beneficial in the long run. Now, they are not to be confused with therapy. There's a difference between therapy and there's a difference between supplements that help, uh, you know, combat inflammation yeah. along with the therapy. Yeah. So that these are, you know, these are known and, you know, more and more research is kind of pointing towards the benefits of curcumin and turmeric and 
omegas and so you know, and even Mediterranean diets, you know. Uh, if you Google Dash D A S H Dash diets, you know you'll, you'll, you'll see that they have their you know they have Mediterranean diets are known to be anti-inflammatory diets. You cut down the grease, the oil, and you know you cut down gluten. Uh, no 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 sodas, high fructose corn syrup sodas. You know you should be eliminate them out of your diet, and you should feel the benefits of it. And of course, exercise very important. You know low intensity for in your case, low intensity you put exercise. You the exercise watches is, it's very, it's key. it's key. You know, I tell my patients, you know, the day you snooze is the day you lose. <laughs> Keep your actual spine mobile. Uh, you know, if you have access to a swimming pool, that's the best thing you can do. You can walk on it. You don't have to swim. You can walk on it, and it increases the mobility of your hips. But it affects the hips as well. It affects the pelvis, and of course, it affects the spine as well. So, uh, you know, exercise is important too. So, Ravi, how do we work out our brain? Silly question. Can I not ask you? Work out your brain. Do puzzles, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> True. Okay, so there's another question. Can GRA or GIA be hereditary? Because I had it when I was two to three years old. Now, uh, my niece who's two years old has been diagnosed. So it's not really hereditary. If you, if you go by the strict definition of something that's hereditary, it means if somebody has it, one of the parents has it, then the offspring, one, any offspring will definitely get it. That's the definition of it's, it's certainly not the case. The only thing is, in clusters, in families, you have a higher risk of children than the general population. All they do is you have a, they, they manifest a higher risk than uh, the average guy walking on the street who does, whose parents do not have the condition. So it just raises and increases the risk. It does not necessarily mean that their offspring will definitely get it. Okay, so very weird question, but not so bad. <laughs> How do we make our bones stronger? Vitamin D, uh, drink, you know, expose yourself to a certain amount of sunshine. Uh, and vitamin D is the key element, which is basically one of the known vitamins that modulates the immune system. It's proven now, and it is the vitamin of the bone. And so you need to have calcium as well, along with vitamin D supplementation. It depends upon the age as well. And of course, um, back uh, uh, exercises that, uh, weight bearing exercises, if you do weights, if you do weight training, it is known to be uh, 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 to promote um, osteogenesis and it promotes healthy uh, formation of bone uh, osteoblasts and keeps a balance between osteoblasts and osteoclasts and keeps your bones thick and, and, and supple. Okay, so now I have a question. Uh, suppose someone has osteoarthritis, a lot of patients have it and they don't really get diagnosed well. What are the early signs that you think? So osteoarthritis, you know, is a mechanical form of arthritis. It's really not inflammatory in nature, it's localized. So generally speaking, if somebody is complain, uh, complaining of a, a middle-aged man or a middle-aged lady who's slightly obese, complains of knee pain, uh, just restricted to the left knee or the right knee, and, uh, uh, and, and, and does not display or manifest other symptoms of stiffness or swelling, etc., etc., then most likely she has osteoarthritis, meaning over a period of time, the cartilage has eroded, there is loss of joint space, which is basically maintained by by the by the cushioning which is done by the cartilage, which does then has a juice, which is known as a snowmobile fluid. So basically it's all dried up, there is no juice, there is no lubrication, bone, such as bone, which generates pain and friction. And basically that causes that causes that is the reason behind uh, pain in such patients, which are then which is then known as osteoarthritis. So there are different therapies where I mean if depends upon the cause. Sometimes people have very heavy physical jobs and they basically wear their joints out. Somebody who's a mechanical laborer, a laborer is obviously going to basically or you know subject their joints to a lot of physical uh, abuse and, uh, and, and and that is the that is the reason behind it. So basically and if somebody has a higher BMI mm -hmm. is kind of obese, they will have joint pain in their weight-bearing joints, such as their knees or their hips or even their ankles, which is basically uh, uh, caused by excess weight. And so if you eliminate or if you try to lose some, you'll definitely feel the benefits, especially on the knee.